In this tutorial I'm going to be looking at the topic of method overloading, which is the idea that you can actually have multiple methods that share the same name and that you can do that in a way that doesn't cause a conflict within your overall program. So I'm going to be continuing with something that I used in a previous tutorial, which was this method called max. And in the previous tutorial I wrote this this method takes two integer values, which I've labeled as a and b within the method. It compares those two values and it returns the larger of the two values. If the two values happen to be the same, it also it'll just return one of the two values. So I have a main method down here that has been written to test those. Now let's say that I decide I want to instead instead of testing between two values, well, what if I want to, um, actually, let's stick with testing between two values. But in my previous method, one of the, or previous tutorial, one of the things I also warned about was the fact that this method expects integer values. And so I have to be careful about integer values as well, because the method has to receive data that it's expecting. So I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm going to take out the user interaction and I'm going to reduce my main program to a call to the max program. So I'm just going to say I want the max between 3 and 4. So this single line of code, if I compile this and run it, well obviously the max between 3 and 4 is going to be the number 4. If I were to reverse this and make it 4 and 3 and recompile it, the bigger number here is still 4, regardless of the order. So I know my max method is working properly. But if I were to say 4.3 and 7.6, so if I were to put in some real numbers there, I get an error. And the problem is that I'm, I'm giving it double values or float values, but the method itself is expecting integer values. So a way I can deal with this, one way I could deal with this is I could just rewrite the max method to use double values instead. But Java has the facility to allow me to have another copy of this max method that uses double values while allowing me to keep this current method that uses integer values because maybe that's useful to me as well. Maybe both of them are useful to me. And so the way that I do that, now in order to let this fit nicely on our screen, I can move the interactions pane, but I can also make this a little bit tighter for space. So let me just go ahead and do that. You can see all I'm doing is taking away some of the white space here, and that has significantly condensed my method. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a copy of that. You always have to be careful whenever you're copying and pasting things. So I'm going to be extra careful here. I'm going to change these to be doubles. But if I'm comparing two doubles, then it makes sense that I would return a double value. And you can see the logic for the code actually doesn't change. The difference now is that I've created a method that will determine the max value of two integers and determine the max value of two doubles but they both have the same name which means that the syntax when I want to use them remains the same so I can do a system.out.println and I can get the max of the numbers let's say 8 and 9 which are two integer values and I can also get the max of these decimal values that I had put in here before. And now when I compile it, it works just fine. And when I run it, the larger of the two decimals was 7.6, and the larger of the two numbers was eight, or sorry, was nine. And I can continue to do this if I have good reason to do it. So let me take this one step further, and this is where I'll, I'll wrap things up. Um, I could also, if I decided to, I, let's say that I'm interested in being able to tell the difference between the maximum of three values. So in that case, public static int, I still want to return an int, but now it's going to be int a, int b, and a third parameter, int c. 
Now there are a number of different ways that you could find the maximum value of three values and I'm only going to just use the, the one that I've used in the past and occurs to me and this is again this is another interesting use of the idea of overloaded values. You might need to watch this part again because this actually this is pushing the boundaries if you're new to this idea which is if I want the maximum of three values well the maximum of three values is simply the maximum of two values so let's start with a and b well if I get a b and c what I could do is actually first of all find the maximum of a and b so I'm going to say a temporary value is equal to the maximum of a and b I'm actually going to make use of one of the other definitions of max and now that I know the maximum value between a and b I can return the maximum value between my temporary value and the last parameter C. So just take a moment to think about what I've done here. This is going to find the maximum of the first two values, whichever one that is, and then I'm going to compare that maximum value to the third value, and so by doing it in these two steps, now I have figured out what the maximum is of the three values. So down here in my code I'm just going to put some spaces in here to make that a little clear system.out.println the maximum of 23 45 and 12 and so this is going to output the maximum of these three values so it will pass in 23 45 and 12 so that means 23 and 45 will be the first two so what's the biggest between those the biggest between those is 45. That will get stored in temp. Then we will determine the maximum between 45 and the last one, which was 12. What's the biggest one between 45 and 12? It's going to be 45. That will be our return value. The return value of 45 will replace this entire method call with just the number 45, and that's what will be output to the screen. So I go ahead and compile that, and I run it. You can see the results of my three executions. The first one, 7.6, is the largest of those double values. 9 is the largest of the two integer values. And 45 is the largest of the three integer values. And if I rearrange this a bit, so let's put the 45 last, 12, 45 instead, just to show you that regardless of whether the 45 was at the middle or at the end or I could put it at the beginning the code does work so that is an example of method overloading um, the thing I mentioned here so parameter signatures I guess a uh, just a quick discussion of this parameter signatures that's what's in this bracket and in order to have overloaded methods in order to have multiple copies each of these signatures has to be unique so this one is two integers, this one's three integers, this one's two doubles. I could have an integer and a double, or a double and an integer. Even changing the order makes it unique. The advantages of doing things this way, I can, I can make use of code with slightly different uh, data types if I need to. I can make use of the same concept, but with larger, in this case, a larger parameter, li parameter list. My limitation is on unique parameter signatures. And the warning that goes along with method overloading is A, don't overdo it. Have a good reason for doing it. And B, whenever you overload a method, make sure that you are testing, testing, testing. You want to make sure your method works exactly the way that you're expecting it to work. Okay, and that's it on this tutorial covering method overloading.